Welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Centurion Defender of Rome, produced and published by Electronic Arts in 1991. It was co-produced with Chris Wilson, who also worked on The Lost Patrol for Ocean in 1990, and the graphics were co-created with the help of Scott Wallin, who also worked on Conan the Cimmerian in 1991, and of course Jim Sachs, who works on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Words of Call and Defender of the Crown. You can see a typical Jim Sachs image of the map and it's definitely Jim Sachs who created this. This is in 4.3 and this is an NCFC game because it was made in America and when they shipped it to Europe they stamped PAL on there but it is an NCFC game. And you can see that the map is very well drawn with a moving selection of water. It is 400 years after the founding of Rome and a young Roman centurion Legion is camped on the banks of the River Tiber. It's 275 BC, by clicking on that we can pull up the game menu and from here we can change a number of options and load and save as well. And unfortunately even though this is an NCSC game I unfortunately recorded this in widescreen mode so that's how we'll be playing it for the rest of the game. You can also see we can change the difficulty level from here as well, of which more we'll move on to in a second. And also, if you click on that, you can also quit back to workbench, switch the music on and off, and also quit playing and even start a new game. At the beginning of the game, it's 275 BC, this is a long time ago, and we are in Rome. And there isn't much we can do at this point but there are legions that we can build, and our first starting legion starts off fierce, but it starts off also very small. And we can't strengthen that legion up at the moment, because that depends on our rank and our level. And our legionnaire level is the second easiest level in the game. But legionnaire level and rank officer is not enough to build anything more in the game, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch to the easiest difficulty, that's the galley slave, and hopefully from the easiest difficulty we can then play the game as easy as it's going to get. We can also select the level of tributes, and in this case we can exempt the province, or let's just give them a small tribute for now. We can't build a fleet because we haven't got any money. And unfortunately, we can only change the tribute policy of the one place that we hold at the moment, that's Italy, which is pretty rebellious, as you can see. All we can do at this point is move the Legion, and if we move that into Sicily, we'll find a very hard battle indeed. So let's move into Gaul and into Narbonesis. And Narbo, in this case, is 10 days march from Rome, and you enter there and the soldiers are tense with anticipation, eager for a fight. So let's confront the guys, and at this stage we can enter a negotiation, which is basically go to war or withdraw. So I wonder what we're going to do. Let's just go to war. And after that we get the formation menu, a balanced army, a wedge or a strong flank, and then we can change our tactics full frontal assault, the Scipio defense, uh, drive a wedge, outflank the enemy, or stand fast. Once you've made your choice, then the action begins, and the enemy starts to move towards us, and from here we can also pause the action at any point, and change the formation of our troops. See the local guys from Norbanesis, the Norbanons, aren't very strong and they will run away because they're basic barbarians at this point. They're only armed with sticks and no shields so it shouldn't be hard to take a victory and at the end it will give us some statistics of how many casualties we lost, in this case 68 guys, and the Norbanons actually lost quite a lot more.
From there we get to go back to the map screen, and then we've now moved our turn, so we can't move the legion any further, but we can perhaps build up another legion using this, but oh no, he cannot command any more regions at this rank. We're still at galley slave level, and we're still an officer, so we can't command any more than one legion at this stage. You can see the map is huge, and it's made out of the known world. We have Gaul all the way up there, we have Hispania, of course these are the Roman names for these places, and let's check this out, this is the Alps, Germania of course, and this is Britannia, hopefully we'll be able to take that land, and then at the bottom we have Macedonia, which is Greece, and around Macedonia we have Asia, and Dacia, of course, Thracia, and lastly Dalmatia. So we have A, B, C and D all the way around there, also Cilicia and Armenia and Pontus is there on the Black Sea and Armenia is massive at this stage and you can see that a fair land is represented in this game. There's Syria and Egypt has taken over Judea and Arabia of course there. We have the North Africa. We have Carthago, which we know all about by this stage, and Mauritania. So that's the land that we can control by invading those lands with our army. It even gives us the names of the oceans as well. And if we click on those, it will tell us the Carthaginian fleet is there waiting for us in the ocean. Mare Nostrum means our sea and the Macedonian fleet are waiting in the Aegean Sea and the Egyptian fleet are waiting in the Egyptian Sea. All the way over here is, according to that, Mare Germanium and the Atlantic Ocean. And we'll probably make it over there towards the end of the game. For right now, all we've got is one legion in Norbanesis and it could be a handy thing to increase the infantry at this point to recover from that last battle. You can see we've already moved, so there isn't anything we can do until we click end turn that will move forward a year. That means we can click on the Legion again and hopefully strengthen that ahead of our next battle. Instead, we're going to move the unit. Let's move them into Gaul because strengthening the unit with barbarians is actually a bad thing to do. Let's negotiate. We can offer an ultimatum at this point. I spit on stinking Roman dogs. Pfft. And unfortunately for the French, it's the Romans, and the Romans are going to drive a huge assault through this. I like to use the Scipio maneuver, and that basically holds fast, and then the enemy will move puffing and panting all the way across the field. You can see the captain is riding a horse at the head of the field. Once the captain is taken, then the whole legion will surrender, the white flag will be raised, the rest will flee in panic, and at this point we can select melee to unleash the legion. That will send them all out to attack the enemy, and any stragglers at this point will be slaughtered. We can also pause the action at any point and manoeuvre our guys around the battlefield. Not that we really need to do that at this stage, and that also involves our captain as well. Let's move our captain, or our commander, or even our general out of the battle area, and that means that we cannot be defeated. stage we can't do much to affect the battle, all we can do is let that ride out and sometimes you can't even manoeuvre guys or even pull guys back from the line if they are in the thick of the action, but sometimes you can simply by clicking on them and dragging and dropping. There you go, that's another victory and unfortunately for the Gauls they lost 3000 casualties in that battle, that means we get to take care of Gaul and now that we're here Unfortunately, yet again, we've just moved so we can't strengthen that legion. But when we click on goal, we can see that their courage is fierce. That's great because our courage is fierce and we'll definitely need two fierce together to keep our strength high. 
If you breed the legion with bored and wandering barbarians, then the overall courage will diminish. So the legion has already moved. So let's click on again to the next year. And it's sometimes a good habit to get into doing that. Let's strengthen the legion. It's now at full strength, 4,200 that we can command. And we've moved up to rank Centurion. But I cannot command any cavalry at this rank, unfortunately. So we've reached Centurion. That's another rank up. That's two places captured. And that should mean, moving through the ranks, that we should now, hopefully, be able to create a new legion. Let's raise a new infantry legion. We can't raise cavalry with our pathetic rank at this point. But we can hopefully raise a new infantry legion. That will give us two and 4,200 fierce soldiers from Rome. We can now move on another year and select to advance them to attack something. We can't attack these boats until we have boats and we can't afford those right at the moment. So let's concentrate on our major army. And here we are. This is the legion. And now let's move them into Spain. Hispania is dry and dusty, and a region called Hispania is part of the Carthaginian Empire. Yes, it is, and the armies of Carthage stand ready for battle. So, let's try to defeat the Hispanians in the Iberian Peninsula, and they call us a pig. So, just for that, let's set up a battle. Let's set up our unusual method of the Scipio method, and Scipio attack means that we stand fast. They have a few elephants at this point, and a few cavalry, but as long as we stand fast and we have the galley slave level of difficulty, hopefully this army won't be too difficult to defeat. Try to concentrate my forces and encircle the army, and you can see the circle of movement that the commander can move to is pretty large. And for some reason, maybe it's because I'm using an all 30, sometimes that's difficult for me to instigate the move. But as long as the commander doesn't get taken by the enemy, that's the most important thing. And you can see the enemy riders are approaching from the south, that's why I'm getting my commander out of the way and hopefully we'll try to intercept those horses or kill them before we get anywhere near us. You can see that cohort is in panic and the infantry are now running away and you can't do anything once they're in panic, you just have to let them leave the battlefield. So they're panicked and they're fierce, so let's move the fierce ones into play and hopefully cut off those horses. melee everybody together, defeat the last of their elephants, defeat their commander and their cavalry, and now we have won the battle. Hasdrubal's army unfortunately used his frontal assault tactic towards us, and Scipio's defence, Scipio Africanus, even though this is many hundred years before those events, has actually conquered the Iberians, so you can see messages will appear sporadically giving us some help and some information and some money as well. We have 77 talents at the moment. Back in Rome they will be dissatisfied occasionally so we'll have to keep an eye on them, but right now I'm going to strengthen my legion and once you've strengthened the legion you can't move it. So let's check out the Legion in Rome and let's move that instead to the Alps. We find some more barbarians. Welcome to the mountains, great warrior. So I'm going to act friendly and diplomatic in this case. I'm going to try to make peace. Unfortunately, having played this game for many hours, I never actually made peace with any tribe throughout the entire game, no matter what I tried to do. So they are now rebelling in anger and it's war. So let's have another balanced army, let's try the usual Scipio frontal defence and let the enemy run all the way towards our swords. At this point the home armies are relatively small so that's all we need to do, wait for them to attack us and then slaughter them and head on. In this case, I'm using the frontal attack to meet the head of me head on, and as long as the commander is defeated before we reach the infantry, hopefully just like this, then the infantry will scarper 
and they will dash all the way off that battlefield. It's great that it tells us who we've been battling against, the formation, our formation, and the stats as well. And here we are at 269 BC, this is before the Punic War happened, the first Punic War that is, and so this is before the first attack on Carthage. So you can see Rome is bored, so let's organise a chariot race, and at this point we can buy one of four different types of chariot, the light, the medium, another medium and another medium, so let's go for a medium, we can race, employ skullduggery or bet on the outcome. And so let's bet some of our money. We've got 71 talents. And let's bet a number of talents more that we are actually going to win the race. That will change the odds as well. That puts us down to 40 talents. Having done that, we can also employ Skullduri to drug one of the opponents, or we can go to race. It's great to see these ancient graphics, and at the start of the race, it's so even Stephen will have to whip the horses to get any speed, and the speed is represented by our green bar. At the top of the screen, you can see a white dot, which is us, slowly catching up to the rest of the field. And you can see the gap in the middle of the racetrack, that's the place to slow down, and you can see I've slowed down perfectly and overtaken one rider. Now you whip the horses like crazy, and... We're approaching another gap, and this is the place to slow down. If you don't slow down, then you'll crash and go off the track. We failed to finish. Checking out the Alps, let's hold some games, and we have a number to choose from, unfortunately we're struggling for money, so let's go for the easiest one, and we bring in some beasts from darkest Africa, to keep those guys happy. And we can raise a legion in those areas, and as long as the guys are fierce at this point, I don't mind raising the legion in the fierce areas, and we've made it to Germania, these are reckless barbarians. So, let's try to be diplomatic, and they say, Lies, you insult us with your lies, you Roman scum. Prepare to die. So, let's prepare for war again. Let's get a balanced army together. This is the best that we can have at our rank. So, let's pit those against the Germanians, and let's see if we can beat Germany in the war. the difficulty levels it can be much more difficult but at this stage there are certain tribes which are difficult in the game the Sicilians are very difficult but the Germanians and the Gauls are pretty easy and even at this rank we can take them and get away with pretty light casualties which is the key in the game you really don't want to get slaughtered you want to defeat the enemy commander as quickly as possible and save as many survivors you can see the enemy ran away and they have survivors and so there won't be any more danger to us. You discovered Nero's fiddle in a junk shop, so it gives us some more talents. Well, we're up to 37 talents, hopefully. So let's rest some more chariots and let's try again. It won't surprise you to learn that in my warm-up I completed this very easily and won it no problem. And now I'm actually recording the game, I can't actually do it. Are you sure you want to exit the race? No, let's just race anyway. And without bribing anybody, it can get pretty difficult unless you can get used to the mechanics of the racing, which isn't too hard. And as I say in the warm-up, I'll beat everybody by about two laps. But in this race, unfortunately, I forgot to slow down, which is pretty easy to do when you're trying to catch up to those leaders. And as long as we are underneath the red bar, we should be fine to lean out on those corners. And actually, I prefer to lean out on the corners and go fast rather than to cut in on the inside, just like this and I find that's easier, usually, 
stop the enemy from overtaking us. And just as we catch those guys, we're on the outside again, and sometimes that's quicker as long as you stop the enemy from overtaking us again on the straight. We're now in third position. Only two more guys to catch up. Even though I can only see three dots on the radar, maybe one of those guys has crashed out already. So maybe we're in second place, but that's really not going to help us on this playthrough. Let's whip those horses. Moving on, it's 253 BC and we've taken some of the lands of Europe and divided and ruled most of that. We're at Legatus level, whatever that means, and we've got 84 talents acquired from all of these places and it's very important that if those places are angry or furious or restless then sometimes they will leave the Roman Empire. Some of those are colonies and once they become a colony that usually means that they settle down a bit and our allies are just a little bit restless that's not too bad but as long as they're not rebellious that's the main thing because you don't want people friendly to us rebelling at this point. The people of Rome are bored they demand a gladiator show so let's buy one of those. Gladiator contest means it's us versus the computer and we can select usually a human counterpart and we can train that up to any degree. So let's train that up to maybe a veteran level. And um, what do we want to fight against? Well we can fight against humans or animals and even a wild lioness. So let's select that one and we can have fat, well fed, hungry or ravenous. So let's have a hungry and let's see how we go on fighting Spartacus against a wild lioness. At the bottom of the screen you can see the damage meter. At the top of the screen you can see the favour meter with the Emperor and sometimes it's best to play a battle the long way and then you get much more favour out of the Emperor. But such a quick battle like that isn't really going to hold us in much stead either. So we now have some cavalry because we're at Legatus level. We're still at galley slave difficulty level, so it shouldn't be too hard now that we have some horses. And let's use this point to strengthen up all the legions as soon as you get horses. Strengthen them all up and then you have the cavalry, just like this. And 300 cavalry against the enemy at this point is pretty fine. So let's strengthen those up again. The local courage is fierce. So it's great to top up the army. If the local courage is weedy or good, definitely don't top up your local army with the good ones, otherwise your overall courage will be only good against fierce enemies. So we can leave some of the good people alone and only top up from the fierce regions. You can see that one was rebellious, this one is angry, and so this one is angry, it's good to check every now and again what's going on in the world and it's pretty early history so we're not getting attacked by many people so far not the Carthaginians or the Parthians but we will be doing a bit later on let's hold some more games let's hold another chariot race and hope that appeases the citizens a light chariot is easier and the heavy chariot is slower but it's at least heavier defended and it means you can bash chariots together. You can also drug people, bribe people and even invoke the gods to change the outcome of the race. Fortunately we're down to 20 talents, make that zero talents right now. So we can only get into that race and see how we go on.
the fish at the bottom of the screen are the laps and as long as we get around in those three laps in the lead that's great it means we can beat the other competitors and I'm going for the inside track again that's not really my favorite method because it means that the opponents can catch us even at full speed and it means now we have to slam on or go off Keeping ahead, let's move on to 253 again. Let's select something else to do. We can also build fleets. Now we've got some money, we've got 84 talents. We can build galleons, which is the biggest ship in the fleet, which is a troop carrier. And that's where we get galley slaves, of course. And those are big ships, but not really great for fighting. So galley is an option. We also have the triremes which were invented by the Sidonese and the people from Tyre. The small ships, and also the Queen Creams, and to pronounce that, some people pronounce it Queen and Cream. The Queen Creams are a medium-sized fighting ship and are battleships of the Mediterranean. So what I'm going to do is to buy a few of the Queen Creams, because they seem to be the best value for money. The galley are definitely expensive, and it will be expensive if you want a fleet of those. So all we can afford is eight at the moment, and that leaves us four measly talents in the bank. Hopefully we can afford the galleons later on. We've now got a fleet in the harbour, and that is four minutes, so we can't do anything with that until we end turn. Clicking on that, it's ready. And we can move the fleet wherever we want to move it, but it doesn't have anybody in the fleet at the moment. And so we'll have to move one of our legions into the boats if we want to do that. So let's move the legion into the boats and we haven't got enough. It says most of our legion will be left behind. So I don't care about that. Let's just put the one guy in there anyway and let's sail off. This is Jim Sack's wonderful NTSC 69 artwork and it's wonderful to see the Jim Sax artwork in this game. You can see the bronze battering rams on the front of our Queen Creams, and those hopefully will batter the army. Then we get an arcade sequence where we can lob fireballs towards the enemy, and it says that we've now got three ships and the enemy's now got 48. We've got 93 men to the enemy's 100, when we get closer we can love arrows and then we can crash into the enemy. At the end of the battle it will also give us the outcome and it says we met the Carthaginian fleet on the gently rolling waters and after the battle we were swept under the seas and now that's the end of the Roman fleet and all of our Queen Kareems. It's 233 BC, it's still quite early in history and we've already taken maybe half of Europe. We've now got 119 talents thanks to collecting those taxes and we are now fierce, we are now a praetor, whatever a praetor is, and that just means that we can command more legions, you can see we're commanding four at the moment, and it means we can top those legions up. Heading on in time, this is after the second Punic War in 199 BC, and you can see we're being attacked. What can we do? The first thing we can do is strengthen our armies before we move in, to trying to retake that land. In the meantime, they are reinforced by another army and the governor of Dalmatia requests a games. We can't do anything about that, we'll have to give him a games if we want to keep him happy. And so we can give him a pretty extravagant racing game. Hopefully they will be content now. And so the Marodi army of Parthia is facing Armenia and we've also got Carthage as well so we'll have to try to move our way around the Mediterranean without any boats and we'll have to invade these lands and take them as we go along. 
can see we've already captured lots of lands and we're getting tons of taxes from those. We've got good morale, so hopefully we can send those off into battle. You can see, moving ahead of time, those armies can move around us and they can be defeated. But I don't think they can be defeated by the local army. I think we'll have to capture the local army every time we capture a land. But if they capture a land, I think they can just march straight in there unless it's got some of our forces waiting as a garrison within it. You can see the Parthians have got horses. And horses in this case against this full crack legion is definitely not going to be any problem. I think this is Consular Legion, which is perhaps the biggest legion that we can get in the entire game. And that means that we can simply wait for the enemy to come to us, walk into our trap, and then again in vain trying to move those things around I think that can depend on the difficulty level as well perhaps at harder difficulties it gives us the option to move more of our units around the battlefield maybe on galley slave level we don't even have the option to command our own general but whatever it is at this point it would be best to melee the action and that sends all of our troops or the last of them against the horses and we can do that this stage with some of our troops and command that battlefield. You can see there are two types of terrain in the game, that was the desert and there's also the open plains as well, so just like north and south we do get two landscapes wish to fight. And another rebellious army and another capture is on the way. And some of the magazines gave this game a very low score saying that the invading and the capturing of the enemies is the great part where we can manipulate our troops and they liken this game to north and south where we can simply drag those around, but unfortunately it's mouse controlled and we don't have complete control using a joystick which perhaps would have been a little bit too easy but you can see that we can drag things maybe not as easy as we could in Carthage so let's speed up that footage and let's capture the army I think using the galley slave difficulty level it's pretty easy to capture every single army in the game perhaps even using different tactics and I stick to the same tactics and I was talking to somebody the other day and they said they use the same tactic to beat every army throughout the game so that's precisely what I'm doing we've got some boats and we need to move our legion onto those boats in order to attack those guys on Sardinia and then if we click those into the boats they will move in there, we'll have to leave some behind and then if we right click on the boat we can then disband them onto the shores of Sardinia without sailing anywhere. You can see they have a small army at this point and we also have a small army at this point so it could go either way but as you've seen it's not that difficult to defeat the enemy the easiest difficulty level. What I'm going to do is consolidate my cavalry and use those to back up the cavalry on the wings and then the infantry will hopefully carve its way through the middle and hopefully I can use my cavalry also to take out that general. great that you can pause the action at any point and check out the formations and move those around but it's pretty unwieldy it's not like a box dragging around the screen it's definitely a line drawing maneuver they will follow that line unless you change it and you can change your mind and drag units to a different location as I'm trying to do but I can't quite do it because the interface is a bit fiddly and that's one of the things that lets this game down it's one of the things that Amiga Power said that the interface is quite flimsy and even though the battle options could have done with a bit more humour like north and south really the map clicking element is a bit pointless and this isn't a map dragger and a map plotter 
like the other games that we've seen, this is definitely simply a strategy sim wrapped up in a map plotter. So we've reached Sardinia and your fleet approaches the marine nation of Sardinia. Now we've taken over the barbarians guarding the place now that we have to take over the town army. And the town army says, no, we don't want you. So we say, with what we've got left, which isn't a lot, we're going to use the same defence and speed up this footage and take over the Sardinians on their home turf. You can see the desert landscape is very well drawn and a number of graphic artists were used to great effect in this game. I looked at this in 4.3 and it just looked completely wrong and squashed in, but on full screen like this you can appreciate the size of the battle. And you will be glad to know that this is the last game that we'll be covering in full screen mode like this and all the rest are going to be in 4.3. Let's move ahead in time, we're now a pro console, which is a fiercely high place in the Roman Empire and we're going to have maybe another gladiator show. We've only got 15 talents in the bank, even though we're now ruling virtually all of Europe. And let's pit our skills against someone else. And unfortunately we can't afford it, we've run out of cash, so we can't do that. And so you can see there are only a few lands that we need to take over now, that we've captured virtually everything, but we'll still have to look out for barbarians at this point, who will capture our lands, we don't have a garrison within it. Electronic Arts called this a cinematic adventure and maybe they were going for a cinemaware type of feel but for me the action in the Colosseum is a bit hammy it's certainly not the worst action fighting game that we've ever seen but it's not Barbarian by Palace Software which is tremendous and it would have been great to do that and unfortunately the racing action isn't even as good as it was in Carthage so we can't give that any marks whatsoever and the sea battles are pretty hit and miss if you manage to land on board the enemy and blow them up it's possible to take them out even with one boat and one crew so it can be hit or miss and these battles and these sub genres and these scenarios don't really add much to the field of battle that we get in this game and if you get lots of places rebelling one after another after another we can get five or six battles going on one after another and we'll have to defend our lands and then capture more lands and so it can be a succession of battles in the game. That can get pretty boring and a bit laborious when you're using the same formation all of the time so I can only think that on the hardy difficulty levels maybe this game gets a bit better but it certainly didn't get by Amiga Power's critical acclaim because according to their rating scenario they give this game 57% 57 out of 100 they said it was paper thin and it was a battle sim dressed up as a real-time cinematic adventure the next loss bottom score went to Amiga Joker who gave this 58% Acar gave it 75 Amiga Format gave it 79 Amiga Computing gave it 8 out of 10 80% the current Lemon Amiga score is 82% Zero avoided this 83, Steve Omega gave it 85, Omega Action gave it the usually high 87, and Generation 4 was the highest score in this game, they avoided the Omega version 90%. That gives this an average score around about 8 out of 10. give this game perhaps maybe a six and a half maybe seven out of ten I think the map plotting isn't as good as the games that we've seen so far and the battles particularly on this easy mode or a doddle and the battles were even more gripping in the Carthage and the Hannibal game and so it really has a lot on offer in terms of graphics not really much in terms of gameplay we've made it to Britannia you know your men crossed the channel 
to Britannia, the island of green trees and fields and pretty damp weather, and we meet a woman there, she says, who violates our sacred soil? He said, we come in peace, we shoot to kill. An ally, yeah, go on there, mate. We know you, you know, we're not fools, we're not stupid. You're the Romans, let's go to war. All right then, let's use our usual defense, let's go to war. Well, in this case, I'm using the full frontal attack against these barbarians. In this case, let's kill the Valkyries, or whatever they are. And let's kill Britannia and cleanse this land of those barbarians. We've now cleansed the land of most of the tribes in Europe. And you can see we can move our legions into boats and then right click on those to leave the boats. And it's great that it gives us some information and some commercials now again to give us some information about what's happening in the real world. And those give it a civilization type of feel. And I do like the landscapes and the Mauritania and the backgrounds and the tribes again giving it a civilization kind of a feel. Fortunately, you can do precious little once you get there. You can upgrade the legion, you can plunder the land, which is basically useless. And you can hold the games there, which is, well, to keep those guys in peace, I suppose. And in some places, you can build a fleet as well. So there isn't much you can do, apart from tax the citizens. And again, the sub-games are hit and miss. And I'm definitely missing as far as this playthrough. So you can see the numbers at the end are the times that I've used those guys to defeat the enemy. This is the fourth time that I've used this guy. And so let's use a fully trained adversary and you can see Marcus Bouts won three. So I've won three to this guy's four and it really doesn't matter because apparently it's still clunky to play this game and I'm trying to drag this out as much as possible to get the most favour. And if you think that that was good then you click on thumbs up, if you think that that was a pathetic one, then you click on thumbs down, and if you get that right with the Emperor, then our meter goes up at the top, we've got better favour, because that was a crap battle by any standards. Let's check out Sardinia, and we're reaching the very end of this play guide now. Sardinia is the first guys that we could have taken, and it's the very last guys that we are going to take in the game. And once all of the lands are taken of all of the enemies, and they've all got blue borders around them, then that's the end of the game. And if you've reached Emperor by that stage, then you can retire on whatever you've managed to get so far, as far as talents. And once you've won the entire game, it will give us a huge breakdown of our progress at the end. You can see it's 182 BC, this is before the Third Punic War, we have become Caesar. we've won a ton of battles, we've killed lots of enemies, we've won three sea battles and we've lost three of them, and we also sponsored 36 games, we entered one race in my warm-up and I won it, and I collected loads of money. And the world lies at my feet, and so remember, this is the Roman Empire, get off my land, and this is the game. So here is the end credits where we see, again, the credits of the makers of the game, some funky pimped up rides as well, and we also get, for the final time, that Colosseum. Thank you again for watching another play guide and review to this game. It's quite funky if you like those strategy games, especially if you like the easy ones. And of course for children playing, this is ideal for them and it's a great feeling to take out a marauding army. See this was drawn in deep paint and you can see all American talent was created in this game. Beware the Ides of March. Thank you.